All right. I'm more this whole area. I'm going to go in and put in some the next phase of color here. And I'm going to carefully plan by looking carefully at my picture. Where do these colors go? Where is it dark and where does it stay? Pretty light. This guy even has a little bit of red in his coat through in here. I'm going to drop that in. Clean up my brush so it's got just clear water and soften these edges. Then his fur gets pretty thick. The color gets pretty thick all through here. This is going to be black, but underneath is underneath it's sienna. So I'm working with a pretty dry paint on a moist paper. And he's got some nice black markings all through here. Long fur, so he uses long strokes. It goes kind of straight across over to his chin. And then black under his chin. All the time looking at my original photograph to make sure I'm getting the right colors in the exact right spot. Okay. And he's kind of got a lot of fur going on. I'm just blocking this in. I'll go back in and a lot of long fur under here. Gray and blues and you want to get different grays in there to add interest. A little bit of ultramarine. So there it goes in some ultramarine. And on the edge of this, it's a bit sienna under his chin, under here. You want to use the white of your paper to really help you. Show those fur, the direction of the fur. So be sure that you save some of the white to add interest and texture. Looking very closely here. You can use the side of your brush too to get some soft effects kind of like scrumbling. It's called scrumbling in, in colored pencil world. <laughs> My mom, Gretchen Parker, does a lot of colored pencil. I'm going to get a little bit more moisture in my brush, so a little tiny bit more flow at least. Just keep adding. A lot of this looks pretty dark now, but it's really just blocking in. And I just kind of, that's how I paint when I paint realistically, is I just keep adding to the layers and with the main end trying to keep it as soft as I can. 
by keeping the, the picture moist as long as possible. Watercolor dries pretty fast, so you got to keep moving. I'm going to go back in with some clear water to establish some rivers of fur. We'll see if it works or not. Sometimes that river of fur thing doesn't work as well if it's like a second or third layer of paint. It works best when you're working on pure white paper, I've found. But this will, this will create some texture. So, And I'll probably have to go back in and work this, so... Just keep playing with it until it looks right. It always takes longer than you think it's going to take to get where you want to go. Just going to keep adding. really soft. His fur looks really soft all through here. So I want to capture that. And drop in some good thick paint all through here. Look at that bloom out. It's really going to create some neat texture. See how it blooms out? It looks so cool. This would be a cool technique to use on those pretty cats with those leopard looking spots. What are they called? Oh, they're so pretty. Of course, since I'm on camera and trying to think of the name, I'm going to not be able to remember the names of the cats, but this would be a good technique for that. Keep it soft. Cat's quite warm here. I'm going to put some yellow down. Through here. Keep it all really soft. Drop in some more sienna. It's always a scary part of the painting in this stage because it <laughs> looks like one big mess sometimes. It's just like, where is this going? It's not going much ever anywhere, I don't think. And then in the end, it all just pulls together, and it's like, yep, I did that. But right now, it can look pretty scary. As this dries, I'm going to keep going back in with thick paint and also with rivers of water to create those neat textures. So I'm just going to keep working on this. 